Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. We are celebrating the player this month. And what better way to celebrate the player than on how to come up with a good name for your character that you will be playing. Names are always tricky and people always try and do them last. I always say do them first. Once you know the name of your character, you can then start to flesh them out. However, there are arguments for making names last after you've created the character. Both ways are equally valid. Both ways, however, don't help you with actually creating a name. I've done this before on the channel a few times, and I hope that I have now added to it to help you in terms of creating a more interesting name for your character, rather than just defaulting back to a name that you read from a book previously or elsewhere, or a name that you have used for the last hundred years. So start with the very first space, uh, very first place, and that's to figure out your world space. So you ask the GM, hey, what's the world like? Is it cyberpunk? Is it fantasy? What type of fantasy setting is it? Is it... Is it uh, um, um, dark and gritty? Is it light and happy? Um, are we talking classical fantasy where it's Elrith of Rinbor or is it more modern day fantasy where it's Harrod Ironbreaker? Get some ideas from your GM as to what the names are like in that space. Now, GM, hopefully your world space, will have some names in there already and you have given it some thought. If not, time to do that now before the players start asking you what is uh, the situation. I then feel that you should then also look at a name that is going to reflect the personality of your character. Now, you may have created your character by now or you will be creating your character depending on your uh, preference there. But in terms of personality, that links back to something we were talking about last week, which is worldview. So when you're creating a name, there are certain names that may, to you, sound like strong names or weak names. Think of the personality that your character is going to have and then choose a name that's appropriate to that. Just a thought. Use it, don't use it. But it's going to guide you. It's going to constrain you moving forward. So if you think that your character is going to have a weak personality and it's going to be fairly insipid, then perhaps you don't want a name that's got lots of strong consonants in it, which sounds like a strong name. Victor, for example, is not a name that I would associate with sounding weak and insipid. I have never met a Victor who has been weak and insipid necessarily. If you want another V name that is not as strong, you might go for Vincent, which is a softer name because there's none of these hard vowels in there, or consonants in there, I should say. So we're going to keep our personality of our character in the backs of our heads, and that's going to help us constrain it. So then the very first thing I do is I then choose an actor or a character from a film that I admire and that I'm going to be basing my character off of. So I might say, right, I want this character to be like Jean-Luc Picard because I think Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek is just the perfect type of paladin. Or, as a matter of fact, I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to choose, let's say, um, the character of He-Man because this giant meat lump is someone that I want to emulate. And so I'm going to go with the idea of He-Man. Now, look at that name. In terms of describing personality, it doesn't get more gender-focused than someone whose name is literally the names we use for the male form. He and man. He be man. Okay, He-Man. Right. So personality is quite important, depending on, 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 on uh, the role that we're going to be playing. So I choose an actor or I choose a character. That also helps me impersonate them because I remember, okay, well, what would he do in this situation? Or what would she do? How would she sound? And then to try and convey that as best as possible. So when you then start to look at their names, you go, okay, Jean-Luc Picard. Um, it's it's three, letter, three names. So let's just drop the Luke and just call him Jean Picard or Jean Picard, as however you want to pronounce it. Now we step into the first phase. So choose a real world name or choose a name that you like, that you found from somewhere, or the, just the name of the actor, for example, just to steal it straight away. So Patrick Stewart, that's also a strong name as well. Lots of hard consonants there. And so then you vowel swap. So you start checking out the vowels. So Patrick, drop out the A, replace that with an E, and it becomes Petrick. Drop the I and change that with an O, and it becomes Petrock. Or it could become Patrack. Patrack could work as well. Play around with the vowels. If you don't find a word that immediately, or a name that immediately pops out, then change the consonants. So Patrick, or let's say, let's go with Petrock. The pet doesn't sound so nice, so what if it was Retrock? 
what if it was redoc? Redoc works quite well. It's got all the strong consonants in it that we like. Or sesoc, or setic, or setac, or cetric. Cetric could work as well. It sounds a little bit serpentine because of the S's, cetric. But that could work for us, right? So we've swapped the vowels, we've swapped the consonants, and we come up with a name. That's a potential avenue for us to go on. We then look at that name and we say, well, how does that compare with the personality? Cetric sounds very, very serpentine, so very duplicitous. We want to create a paladin, so maybe Radok or Radric. Radric is quite cool. It's Patrick, just Radric. Don't have a problem with that, just changing out the consonants. Radric is quite a strong name. That works quite well. But now, is it too fierce? Is it too aggressive? We look at the emotion that is inspired in the name. Radric is quite a strong name. Sir Radric is actually a pretty good name. I don't think it's emotionally devoid. I think it speaks of someone who's strong of character. But perhaps we want the name also to have a timid reflection as well. So it might be Radric um jean let's say for example so radric jean picard uh, because we're keeping the gene in there which is uh, in the old-fashioned days was either a masculine or feminine name jean of course is, is is masculine depending on 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 the continent you live on so the idea then is that you start to con 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 create this name using emotions what is the emotion that i kind of get from this name now this is all going to be very personal by the way in terms of everything, whether the name is strong or weak or timid or insipid or charismatic, whether it's it's um, a fierce name or a timid name, that's going to be up to your personal interpretation. Once you then have this rhetoric Gino, because we swapped the vowels around and that sort of thing, uh, rhetoric Gino, you go, all right, so then let's look at the species from which this name is coming from. Now, if we are going to understand the species properly, we have to talk to our GM. But we should have done that already to talk about the species that we're going to be playing and what species we can find in the campaign and all those kind of wonderful things. So we should have a fair idea of what the species are like, but we can ask our GM, hey GM, what is the naming convention for this species? Do halflings have a double barrel surname, which is usually proud foot or stout tree or wide barrel or full barrel? Or is that something that's in your world or is it not? If the GM says, oh yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. You can have stout barrel or long tree or, or large foot. Again, take that and say, okay, well, Patrick, uh, Radric, sorry, Radric Gino is a paladin, uh, but a halfling paladin. So Radric Gino, it could be a paladin, but then they're supposed to have this this light foot oak tree stout name type of double barrel thing at the end. So Gino, I could imagine becoming Gino Tree or Gino Rock, no, Gino Foot. Uh, maybe it's the Gino that's the problem. So we want him to be using a mace and a shield, so stout or strong. Hey, let's just go back to the emotion that we were using. Strongfoot. Radric Strongfoot. Sounds like a pretty solid name for a halfling, if you ask me. Especially a paladin, Sir Radric Strongfoot. That certainly works. So we're exploring, we're trying different combinations, and we're using the constraints of the emotion we're trying to convey, of the uh, class we're trying to convey, of the um, environment, the world space that the gym has made for us. Now, what we also want to do is we want to imbibe just a little bit, a little bit, just a very small amount of history into that name. If you look at your own name, your own name is going to come with a lot of history. Why did your parents call you whatever it is that they call you and most parents call you multiple things they choose a name and then they either forget it or they decide on a better one i mean i'm going to be the same thing i can never choose my npc names let alone my child's name that thing's going to be with it for life you got to figure out a good name right so why did they choose it what's the history attached to that that will allow you to then create a little bit of backstory, literally from unpacking just your character's name. So if you've got a good backstory that you've already created, go back to your birth paragraph, see two weeks videos ago, and just figure out a little sentence. 
My parents called me Radrick Stoutfoot because the family name is Stoutfoot, which makes sense, and it's a proud family tradition. We've always been paladins or security guards or chiefs or, or we've always been at the forefront of the battle. And Radrick, because Radrick the First was my great uncle, he was a proud paladin and I strive to be like him. I only met him once before he died and he left a great impression upon me. All of that, you're going, whoa, this is a lot of information that's just come from the name. The GM can now take that information and say, right, your great uncle's coming back to haunt you or is being trapped in, in the first layer of hell uh, or has unfinished business or left a sword behind and all that was left behind was a cryptic note which your great aunt has been keeping but she's now dying so she's going to give you that great note as her death bequeathment and suddenly an adventure comes out of that just from your name do you see how powerful it is to come up with a really really good name your task for this week therefore is to create an awesome name come up with a name for some characters uh, choose and base it on their personality on their occupation on their family history perhaps uh, on the region in which they're going to be coming from and try the vowel and um, consonant swap choose an actor that they're based on or a character from a film or a series that they're based on and then just give us a little description down below that could be really really cool of the name it'll also create a nice little random name generator for the rest of us who can come in and go oh i like that name thank you and i will pull it out so in your post which i hope you do comment on after hitting that like button and the subscribe button please thank you and um just put the character name first and then if you want a little bit of a history in there as to where that character name came from that would be absolutely absolutely phenomenal until next week i leave you with this week's sponsor Today's sponsors have been with the channel for a long, long time. I am talking about Easy Roller Dice. Now, Easy Roller Dice just came out with a color spray dice. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful dice. And what I like is the inclusion of 4d6, not just the usual 1d6, in as a part of this full set. They have a full range which you can check out. Link down below for our affiliate program. Yes, we will make money when you buy the dice, but it doesn't add anything to your total cost. And as a matter of fact, it actually helps them to lower their costs as it means they get more sales. And you, Get amazing dice. Now, it's not just the dice for the players that they make. They do sometimes make some GM dice, which I particularly like. Like this D20. That's right. This is a gigantic D20. Absolutely stunning execution. The numbers are nice and clear to read. You know, my poor old eyes, I find it difficult to read. Wonderful sort of pearlescent swirling going on inside this dice. This is the dice of the frost giant. I kind of feel like a frost giant whilst using this dice, I have to admit. Nice weight to it, nice rounded edges. It's really, it just, even on a, on a, on a soft surface, still has a nice thunk to it. Anyway, Easy Roller Dice, sponsor of today's video. Go check out their dice link down below. Big thank you to you for watching all the way through to the end. And until next week, I wish you and yours the very happiest of uh, rolling.